Guys, I retired the squeaky creaky old wood bar stool that I was using for this, uh, that I would sit on and I would use for sharpening. But that's not what we're gonna talk about. You guys know we saw the title, the best production knife I've ever owned. How good is it still? And you might not have even seen this knife yet. So let's look at the Horizon D in carbon fiber and titanium by React. You guys know what time it is. Turn down the volume, because here comes a little bit of music and we're gonna look at it from above. Guys, I'll let you in on a secret. If you have a hangover, these studio lights are incredibly bright. So at any rate, let's get started on this. This is my Horizon D in carbon fiber, titanium M390 steel. Now I purchased this knife in 2015 for about $410. I believe that was the price that they were on Knife Center. I could probably look up my original purchase on Knife Center to let you know for sure, and I may. But uh, so when I got this, I had been into custom knives a lot. And so this was the one of the first knives that I got that really showed me what was possible in uh, production knives. I got this one and the Microtech DOC. And now while I had had a Sebenza and I knew that production knives could be done incredibly well, these were the ones that started showing me that you could get some... I mean, as much as I love my Sebenza, everyone has to admit, a Sebenza is plain. A Sebenza is plain, but the thing that you're paying for is the quality of, you know, engineering and stuff that goes into it. These were the first knives. This and the DOC were the first knives that showed me you could get into some of that custom quality and some of that flash and look that you would see in custom knives at a price point that really was not out of your, it was not unattainable. So when I got this, the first thing that struck me was look at that carbon fiber and all that. But before you do that, I am going to put a spec sheet over here to the right so you guys can look up the specs on this knife. Now, I do know that they've started producing these again, but this was the first production run. I got in on the first production run of the Horizon D in carbon fiber. Now, they had had a Horizon C, I believe. There was some other, there was a District 9 and some other knives, but I had never gotten any of those. This was the first knife from Riat that I got, and it really, really pointed out to me how good some of these production knives could be. And like I said, I got, I got this one. 2015, I got this and the Microtech DOC. So, you know, over the years, I've had this knife. I have had zero issues with this knife, except I cracked a bearing and I was able to get a new set of bearings. Um, action on this thing has been amazing from day one. That, that snap you get, listen to that. The action on this has been amazing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, this is not how the knife came. I have done my own touches on this. Uh, this is an anodizing that I did when I got it. It came with this, uh, like this etched faux Damascus on it. And this was just almost, I think it was a stonewashed titanium and carbon fiber. Now I took this and I polished up the carbon fiber a little bit extra. And I polished all this and anodized it myself because I really liked the knife and I wanted to make it mine. Now you'll see that the centering on this is just slightly off. This is not actually, I don't really think it's off. Like if you look at it, it seems like it's off, but it actually, it's because the lock bar drops in so far. So I've had zero centering issues with this. I've had zero blade play, I had no problems with lock stick. It's developed nowhere over the last seven years that I've carried this. Now I've said for years that this is the best production knife I've ever owned. It truly, truly is. And it's not just that it is so quality. It's all the bells and whistles you got with it. Uh, just the look of it, the way it feels. This knife is amazing in hand. This is probably one of the most comfortable knives I have ever owned. Now, there are some downsides to this knife. I'm not going to try and blow smoke up your rear end and tell you that this knife is perfect. Um, it is relatively thick blade stock, and it does not terminate behind the edge to a real thin behind the edge. But a good convex edge kind of rolling into that has, has gotten rid of some of that issue. But it is still a little bit thick behind the edge. 
um, it is kind of heavy, even though it's carbon fiber. There's not a lot of weight reduction done on this titanium. As a matter of fact, if you look, there is none. So this is one of those, this is one of those cases where it is a little heavy, even with the carbon fiber. Um, carbon fiber on one side and not the other, you can feel a definite difference in weight from side to side. Some people don't like that. Uh, my friend Jesse that runs Otter Arms does not like a carbon fiber scale and titanium scale. He would much rather have both sides be the same. I've carried the titanium version of this, the all titanium version of this, and it is way heavier. So let's go ahead and go get the scale and the calipers and we'll take a look at those two specs. So let's go ahead and get the weight on this, on our Nick Shabazz certified gem. So in ounces, this thing is coming in, like I said, five and a quarter. It's not a light knife. It's also not super heavy because you do have the carbon fiber scale on one side. Um, so in grams, for those of you who don't use freedom units, that's going to be 148 grams. So let's go ahead and get the scale out of the way. And let's take a look at the blade stock thickness and behind the edge thickness with this set of calipers here. So you're looking at 0.155-ish behind the edge. Now, like I said, this is not super thin behind the edge. This is a fairly thick behind the edge knife. But even though it's still coming in 0 0.02, we're looking at 0 0.029. Uh, 0 0.0290, 0 0.0975 when you get right at the bevel. So there you go. So not super thick behind the edge, but it's also not super thin. So it, I would say it's kind of in that Goldilocks zone where it's a resilient, good, you know, heavy use blade, but also still thin enough behind the edge to get some good cutting. The steel on this was the first knife I ever got in M390 steel, and it really showed me the difference between some of the high high-end steels uh this steel uh was done incredibly well by react the hardness on this i don't know what it wound up coming out at but the m390 on this is really well done uh, it holds an edge forever and it takes an incredibly crisp edge um m390 that's done well is one of those steels that will hold up to a higher grid edge i believe right now i only have about a thousand grid edge and as you can see um, it has been touched up on a ceramic rod, so it almost has kind of a micro bevel. Uh, this knife has gotten used a lot. The finish on this is just completely gorgeous and does not, it hasn't shown any scratches really. It's a nice heavy stone wash, laser etch on this. The only thing I've ever done to this knife beside the anodizing is I did open this choil up a little bit. The actual design, it was a little close and I opened it up because what happened was you started to get that, that spot where it widened up and ramp up. And, and I didn't really like that. But all in all, this knife has held up well. It runs on, this thing does run on ceramic bearings. It's a multi-row bearing system. Now, I will say that this knife does have to get taken apart and cleaned up more often. I do not know what it is about this specific multi-row bearing system that they used, but it does seem to gum up and get dirty and, and require disassembly and maintenance more often than some of my other bearing knives. But now that I'm using KPL, it does not seem to. This knife has probably been carried, I'm going to say the only knife I carry more than that, or carry more than that now, is my Norseman. And it's because this was a grail knife. Now, I can't compare this knife and this knife because this isn't what I would consider a production knife. This is a custom knife. This is 100% hand-built. It is not a mass-produced item, which is why I'm going to say, still say this is the best production knife I've ever owned. I have had... So many knives that have come in and out, and I can honestly say this is the one that I always gravitate back to. There's never going to be a time where I don't look at this knife and say, yeah, that thing's great. Listen to the action on that. It just sounds amazing. So of all the Riettes I've ever seen, and any of the Riettes I've ever had, I have another Riette made knife. Now this is a, an Oxworks. I have handled a lot of Riette knives. I'd say that this is my favorite design. I'd say this is my favorite knife of theirs. And I have to say that the act, this has got some of the best action lines, feel in hand and things like that. Pocket clip on this. Let's look at the pocket clip real quick. Pocket clip on this thing is just shy of perfect. It has just got the right amount of tension, nice and clean, comes down, does not hotspot. And it's attractive. A good attractive pocket clip can be, it can accentuate a knife. I just typically dislike pocket clips. This one, I don't mind too much. I typically am gonna complain about pocket clips on knives. Carbon fiber on this was done beautifully. And I'm probably gonna have to pause here in a little bit because I got F-18s flying over. 
Um, but everything on this was milled and just clean. You get the same milling pattern from side to side and the carbon fiber was done. There's zero voids. The carbon fiber was done incredibly well. So you get that, per, you get that, you know, that opalescence and, and the, the, the contrast and that refraction from the carbon fiber. And it looks like you'd be able to feel it. That's how clean it is. And the only thing you can feel is that milling pattern that's in it. Like I said, which is identical from side to side. The lines on it are beautiful. It's got the big uh, lock bar insert in here that acts as an over travel stop. You can't see it too well until you open it up. And then you can see um, from the back here, you can see that there's an in integrated over travel stop for that that basically prevents the knife from... It's it's actually larger than the entire thing and it, it sticks over and it prevents you from over traveling. Um, it's got a ceramic detent, big detent ball. The tension on the lock bar is just perfect. Um, I didn't want to mess with the lock over tension. So when I did the refinishing on this, I did not straighten this lock bar. So this is still the original lock bar tension that came on this knife. And like I said, it just snaps open with authority. Zero detent player lash in it at all. Um, now I will say that I have knives that cut better than this. And I might have knives that carry better than this. But when you look at the overall package, everything from tip to tail, nuts and bolts, this knife hit every wicket that I would have wanted in a knife. And it still does. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It doesn't, it has not over time lost its luster in my eyes. So if you guys are seeing these and they're coming out and you're like, wow, I wonder, I wonder what these horizon, you know, these, these horizon D's that, that are coming out, the newer ones. Um, they're doing some that are a lot different and things like if you're just curious about what kind of quality knife you're looking at It's amazing. I will say the I, I could the flipper tab could be a little smaller But the fact is when you get it in hand down there, it just it integrates itself into the guard In as a guard so well like you can get up on that and it just feels Solid in your hand. It does not feel like it's gonna go anywhere and the jumping on it was just about perfect It's not it's not heavy jimping that's gonna hurt your hand when you get down in here, even though the jimping is on that. This is more along the lines of like a hinderer pocket clip or flipper tab that kind of looks like it's on backwards, but this one is not hot spotty. It does not hurt your hands. You can do a lot of heavy work with this and really, really get down on it. Um, and then you have that beautiful fuller that runs the entire length of the blade. So guys, I could talk about this knife like literally all day, but I will tell you, if you're interested in these knives, um, the reason I'm doing this, I've seen that there's, they've brought back this knife. It's now no longer a discontinued model. David brought this model back and I'm really happy about it. The only thing I would say is I wish that they weren't doing a detent hole. Like there's so many knives now that have a detent like cut out in the backspacer. But on this knife, I think that that would have detracted from that beautiful backspacer that goes all the way around. That's the only, that's the only part about this I don't like. But it has been machined well where it's not at all sharp. It's nice and smooth. So if you've debated getting into one of these and taking a look at them, like, yeah, I don't know. Here's here's my take on it. You could not go wrong with this knife. Uh, the the React's quality has not dropped off. If you get one today, it's going to be every bit as good as the one I got off the first run. And you just, I, I honestly don't think you could go wrong with one of these knives. Guys, that's that's it on this one. Let's turn this around. I've gushed about this enough. I love this knife. I just, I'm doing this for me because that meant I got to get this out and put it in my pocket for a little bit and carry what I wanted to carry as opposed to something I was just going to review. So let's turn this around, do some final thoughts. Guys, I'm sorry. It sounds like we may still have a little bit of echo. I'll try and get it out and post. Hopefully I'm able to equalize it. But yeah, so there you go, guys. I honestly have been in love with this knife from the day I got it. I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. Um, I think I saw Jim Skelton do a review about this knife. I think he got a pre-production version and I got it and I was like, man, I'm in, I'm in love. Uh, the day this showed up, I knew right out of the box that I was going to love it. So just wanted to provide that to you guys. Not all you guys, maybe you guys didn't get to see this knife. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's it on this one. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, but you got to tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't tell me what you don't like. Um, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. If you want to support the channel financially, there's a handful of ways you can do it. They're all in the description down below. I have a membership that gets you in on a bunch of different benefits. 
um, based on tiers. Pick the tier that suits you best, but everyone saves $5 in my sharpening service and everyone has access to my Gilded server. But if you're a premium tier uh, member, I have a sharpening tutorial series that I have put up that I do walk, walk through step-by-step -step sharpening for those guys. So um, other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below where I link a lot of the stuff you'll see in channels, tools, stones, things like that. Doesn't cost you anything to check out. It just, they pay me a little bit and it doesn't cost you anything. And the final way is I do have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. I have set up a coupon code for you that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. that saves you 10%. That coupon code is Crazy Sharp. Capital C, capital S, all one word, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me, send me a picture of you wearing my merchandise, I will put it in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.